of this pick process. So um, instead of rebinding the, the, the send site when we in, encounter a new class, we want to um, break this call of the method and uh, in between the method that we want to get to and the send site, we want to build a jump table to deal with lots of different classes. So um, I've let the, the system run for a little bit longer. And um, what's that going to be? So, uh, that's right, we have to, sorry. still not there, I have to rebind it. Uh, yep, okay. There we go. Can't see anything in the and then right. Okay. So what we've done is execute this thing um, with another class. Oh no, what's going on? Come on. Be my jet lag's getting the better of me. No, it's not. Come on. All right. All right. Sure, I don't get this. Ah, that's why. That's why. So. We were looking at uh, the wrong method. We were looking at, at key value. And I want to have a look at, at, at new. So um, here we go. Right. So um, here is object new and it's run been run for a few times and in the middle of it is um, is basic new. So 
So here's the machine code for uh, the basic new send. And um, you'll notice that it's not going to the same place before uh, basic new was wherever it was down there at 8B something or other. And now we're um, calling uh, basic new somewhere completely different. And our inline uh, class tag is uh, still is shared queue. So the first time, the first class that we executed machine code for, for the new method was to uh, shared queue. So let me um, show you what we've uh, linked the send site to. So when we miss, we allocate what I call a closed pick because the polymorphic inline cache is going to deal with a fixed number of cases. And you see that it, it's, it's got a, a, a different type header. Methods are type 2, and three chunks are type 1, and this is type 4. Blocks are type 3. And so we've got exactly the same entry code um, as a normal method because we want to collect the class of the current receiver into EAX just as we did with the normal checking. And again, we have a, a compare against uh, whatever's in the class register. But now, if um, if there's a mat, if there's a miss, we uh, we jump forward instead of jumping to the abort. And this one jumps to basic new. So here's the code that says, okay, compare the class of the current receiver against the class at the at the send site, and if they agree, call the first basic new method. If they don't agree, this guy jumps to AAB5, which is this. So this is the first comparison case, and we're we're saving a little bit of of, of space by reusing that uh, register load that we had at the at the send site. So the send site is now not linking to, to basic new, but linking to this uh, little jump table. And it's immediately followed by another uh, case here where um, we compare the class of the current receiver against process. And if that matches, it turns out that we jump to the, the same place. We wouldn't always jump to the same place if you had some uh, uh, really polymorphic code where you had different implementations in different classes, you would, would be jumping to different target methods. But here, there is no, um, there is no effective polymorphism uh, because there's only one implementation of basic new in the system. Yeah, there's actually two, but never mind. Um, so let's uh, let this uh, run for a while. I'm going to set another uh, breakpoint. Yeah, this is what I want to break at. And I want to remember that. Um. So now let's have a look and uh, see. Before we had a shared queue at the send site, and then process, and then if we fell off the end, we called uh, this this guy uh, for extending a, a pick. Uh, and this thing uh, is over allocated, um, has space for um, up to six uh, entries.
So uh, it's the same pick, you know, it was exactly the same uh, guy, uh, AA70. And uh, you see that here there's a, a field in it to say how many cases are valid. Uh, and by knowing how big each of these sequences of machine code is, because it's just very straightforward code, I can uh, iterate through the classes uh, in, the, in the pick and find out where the data is. And so here it is, and uh, it's grown. So we uh, have exactly the same thing of, of comparing against the class at the send site, and then process, and then the next class is delay class, and then we've got file path class, and UTF-8 text converter class, and Unix file directory class. So we've got six classes, counting the one that we've got at the, at the send site. So what's happened is that the, these are the, the first six classes that we've, we've executed new uh, with in the system. So what could we do when we go beyond um, some finite limit? I mean, we could make this thing very large, but that would mean that we'd be chewing through huge amounts of space allocating these, these tables. We want to keep these. It doesn't make any sense to allocate a table with, with room for 100 entries or 1,000 entries. It's never going to be big enough, and it's going to waste lots of space. So um, one of the things to observe is that the um, distribution of, of uh, the polymorphism in, in, in send sites is, is more or less exponential decay. So there's, you know, 90% of send sites have just one class. And then the bulk of the, um, of the polymorphic things have degree two. And then a fewer number have degree three and degree four, et cetera, in a kind of an exponential decay. So by the time we get to, to six, we're getting a very small number of, of sends that, that are going to be what's called megamorphic. And so um, there's a, what, what am I trying to say? Um, what I'm try, trying to say is that um, a good choice is just to implement um, a lookup of the first level method lookup cache uh, in, in machine code and doing it as, as efficiently as we, as we can. Um, and so when we, we go beyond some fixed number of, of cases, we're going to replace this pick, uh, which is closed. It deals with a, a closed number of, of, of cases with something that's, that's uh, open that will um, deal with an arbitrary uh, number of of cases, and that's uh, what I do here. So I'll just show you the pick. Uh, so um, it probably won't look that clear, but what we're doing here is rebinding the send site and making uh, a piece of machine code that replicates what the uh, inline, uh, the, 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 the interpreter does for the first level uh, method lookup cache. Um, and so in this case, when we um, fetch the, uh, the class for small integer, we actually do fetch the, um, the small integer class. And here we are loading the, the, the class for small integer when we've got um, a tagged integer. And here we are um, indirecting through the uh, compact class table when we've got uh, an object with, uh, with compact 
uh, with a compact class representation because in the interpreter the first level method lookup cache is organized with real class objects not, not class tags so this is again a slight variation on the on the checking code and then what's happening here is um, here we are um, doing that that XOR to get the, the hash but now because we've produced this machine code for this send site the uh, the selector is a constant right it's a it's a constant in the code right because this this is just for that that particular selector basic new um, and when we compare uh, uh, looking at what we fetched when we fetch the selector from the uh, the inline uh, from the method lookup cache we're doing a, a constant uh, load and when we get onto a more sophisticated code generator where we are actually applying we're mapping some elements of the stack to registers this is very useful because it reduces register pressure because on x86 you basically only got six registers um, and if you have to burn a register for, for the selector uh, you can you can be in a position where you can't use this technique for for the kind of arities that you might want to so what's happened in this optimization of, uh, of, of sends is that we've got this uh, life cycle of send sites that the first time you try and a jitter method uh, a send is translated to this unlinked form where you just send uh, 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 you're going to call a runtime routine and some 40 percent of, of sends in typical small talk programs never get executed so 40% of your sends stay in this virgin state. And then of that remaining 60%, 90% uh, of those uh, only ever become monomorphic. They only ever get executed for, for one class. And then the remaining 10%, uh, 9% it's 9 of the total, uh, appear to um, become monomorphic to a small degree where that might be six or eight or you know choose your constant some vms use four um and i've used eight before and i believe that the hotspot java vm uses four and i use six in in, in cog and then the remaining kind of 0.9 percent of of sends become megamorphic and we uh, we implement this um as efficient as we possibly can <laughs> Uh, probe of the uh, of the first level method lookup cache and I uh, did some profiling the other day um, and I think I can find that measurement I could have just presented the blog post, I guess, but I think it's more fun to see me use the simulator and uh, to see the, the, the real machine code. Um, I don't know whether you agree. So, um, right. So here's, um, here's some code to count the different kinds of sends. So what I'm doing here is going through all of my methods in the in the method zone. Why why use a, a, a fixed size amount of memory for for machine code? One answer is that by putting all of the machine code together, it's very easy to enumerate over methods and uh, do things like unlink sends. You'd have to uh, go through all of those linked sends and unlink them every time in the IDE you redefine some some method with a particular selector. 
because you don't have any proof to, 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 to say which of those sends would be invalidated when you redefine the method. So you just, uh, you're informed by small talk that a particular selector has changed and the only thing that you can really do is go through and, 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 and find all of those linked sends and turn them back into those, those unlinked, uh, that unlinked state. So one, one reason for having a fixed size zone is, is it makes it easy to, to, to manage. But a, a better reason is that um, by having a, a, a small fixed size zone, you get a better iCache performance and uh, you get better runtime performance. So the other day I was measuring uh, the time taken to recompile the system uh, with a one megabyte code cache, which is the default in COG, and then uh, the time required to recompile the system with a two megabyte code cache. And recompiling the system is, is, is interesting because in recompiling every bytecode method, you clearly throw away all of the machine code you've ever generated because all of that machine code becomes invalid at some stage because you've redefined all of those methods. So it does have to do some, some work. And um, strangely enough, it's, it's faster to, to do it in a, in a one megabyte. A code cache than, than in a two megabyte code cache, and there's two things going on there. One is one is better iCache performance, and then then the other is less work done trawling through machine code because you're looking through half as much machine code when you're unlinking. And I'm not sure which is which is which, but uh, small, <laughs> compact uh, code works very well. So what this does is is go through the method zone and uh, count the number of methods. And then for um, a proper method, uh, goes through the metadata in the method and looks for all of the, the sends uh, in the method. And um, looking at the machine code, tries to find out what that call target, what, what, what the, the send is calling, whether it's calling a runtime routine or another, another method, which could be a, a pick or a method. And that's what this does. So here, uh, if, 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 if we're calling a runtime routine, then um, like C, send, zero args, all of those unlinked things, those will be less than the method zone base. And so we count unlinked here. Otherwise, we're, we're, we're linking to some kind of, of, um, of machine code target. And um, this thing figures out the, um, the target method and then says, OK, well, if we're linked to uh, a method, this is a, a monomorphic send. If it's a, a closed pick, it's a, a polymorphic send. And if it's uh, an open pick, then it's a, a megamorphic send. And so here are the, um, the results. So there were, uh, in this little test that I ran, just starting up an image, 1,700 uh, methods. And um, interestingly, 3.6 sends a method. 38% um, uh, of, of sends are not linked. 38% are still in the unlinked, unexecuted sent, uh, state. Uh, of, of the 62% um, which are used, 90% are mono, monomorphic. 8% are um, polymorphic up to degree 6. And 2% uh, are uh, megamorphic. So that's this kind of straightforward exponential decay. One of the things that I've done um, is uh, it seems interesting that because these open uh, caches are specific to a selector that they can be shared between send sites to the same selector. If you've got two points in a program which send the, the same selector, you could share that method lookup probe. And um, eagerly, if you were, whenever a, a send site goes from being monomorph monomorphic to, to megamorphic, uh, monomorphic to polymorphic, you found that you already had uh, a lookup, uh, an open. Uh, pick you could link directly to it um, and that would make sense if um, there's a correlation between selectors and how polymorphic they are <laughs> and that turns out to be the case so um, if you compare all of the send sites against 
those selectors that have uh, open pick sends, you find out that 80% um, uh, of selectors that are, 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 are megamorphic are only megamorphic. And only 20% of selectors that are megamorphic have a, a, a polymorphic uh, case. So that you, you'll only find 20% of, of, of selectors which have an open pick have any closed pick at all. So it makes sense to avoid creating the closed pick and going through all of the effort of extending the closed pick if you already have an open pick available. Because chances are that closed pick is going to become megamorphic very soon and you can save your, yourself time. And I think what's um, interesting about that is not that optimization. What's interesting about that is that I never had that insight when I was working in C with the VisualWorks VM because asking the question was too painful. It would be like a week of C hacking. Whereas it was an hour to ask that question and answer it in the simulator using Smalltalk as a scripting language. And, that, and that's what's cool. This kind of, sorry, I'll, I'll take, take your point immediately. But what's, what's cool is, 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 is using high level languages and interactive development environments to, to uh, develop VMs when you can script them is fantastic for, for uh, you know, instant gratification, for being able to, to, to articulate questions and evolve the design uh, much quicker. Uh, you mentioned megamorphic uh, caches were, were mostly um, using the same method definition. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a tragedy there that um, megamorphic sends are the most expensive sends. Why, why can't you, if uh, there's usually a few definitions, why can't you just handle those special cases and then do the common case in the rest? I mean, like, so basically there's four implementers. So the check the specific cases where there are differ differing uh, implementers and then the case. Because in validation logic would be the same as for... for right. The, the problem is that to do that requires a clo closed world hypothesis, right? If I can introduce new classes, then I'm going to have to throw away that invalidation co code whenever I create a new class. So I need a hook in the system that's going to tell me when a new class is created or when a new class is instantiated. Well, and I you, you, had a, you had a hook for when uh, the method was recompiled. So. Right, but I, I, I don't have uh, one when, a, when a, a class is created. Right, so I don't know where in the hierarchy the class is and whether it, it relates to that version of the method for which it should be invalidated or, or, or that. So those things are, are, are things that you can do, but they're much easier to apply in a, in a closed world uh, assumption. Uh, but um, there's been a lot of research on, on these kind of things, and they're, and they're discussed. It's just not something that I do, I do in COG. I've kind of, you know, and you should uh, try and find the papers which, which, which do exactly that. And, and that is a, a standard technique, I believe, in um, statically compiled uh, systems which apply a closed world hypothesis. Or can do a closed world analysis where there is a. a, a well, um, let's let let let's say that that you know we've got one implementation here, and then we've got the implementation up in in object, right? If I create a child of this implementation, then the invalidation logic has to change. If I create a child here, it doesn't, right? So the virtual machine uh, either has to be informed or has to do the class analysis, and I'm not going to write that kind of class analysis in the virtual machine. That's making loads of assumptions about how classes are laid out, how classes are managed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, you know, um, and the other thing is, um, how expensive are these megamorphic sends? Because if these megamorphic sends turn out to be really expensive, then your approach wins big, right? But what if they're not very expensive? So here's some, some benchmarking code that creates some arrays. So here's an empty array. Here's a homogeneous array with the small integer 1. Here's a homogeneous array with the, with the floating point uh, 1. 
Here's a homogeneous array with the fraction a half, etc. And then here's a, a polymorphic array uh, of degree uh, four, which has a small integer, a float, um, uh, a, a fraction, and a scale decimal uh, at every mod four uh, index. And here's a megamorphic array that has small integer, float, fraction, scale decimal, uh, small integer class, float class, uh, fraction class, and um, and scale decimal class. And let's, um, for those different collections, measure the cost of this send. Right. So, um, I done this completely wrong. I don't believe my benchmarking, but never mind. That's probably because I'm hungover. Um, the, 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 the time that, no, no, that's right, that's right, that's right. We start off with the homogenous <laughs> and, and then things, uh, things evolve. Right. So um, if, I, if I run, run them and subtract the, uh, the, 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 the time for the null loop for the array with, with where uh, each element is nil, I'm going to basically have timings that are dominated by the cost of the yourself. So indeed, sending to an immediate is much, much quicker because there's no fetch of the header world. So the value is in the register. And um, we don't take uh, an expensive uh, read fault. When we've got compact classes, it's uh, slightly uh, more costly than uh, normal classes, but this, this kind of difference is probably in the noise. These are essentially the same. So uh, these are dominated by the fetch of the, of the object's header word to extract the, the class. And then when we're polymorphic to up to degree six, you can see that there is a slight slowdown, that uh, polymorphic sends are indeed some 30%, 40% slower. <laughs> but what's interesting is that megamorphic sends are not that much slower. Of course, what's happening here is that I've got a very, very small uh, working set. Uh, my megamorphic array only has eight objects in it. Right? So I'm not taking large hits for um, fetching the classes of lots and lots of different objects. And um, more importantly, what the open pick does is at the end, of course, it does an indirect branch. There's an indirect branch to the target method, and I've only got one target method here. So in terms of the branch prediction logic in the processor, I'm going to get a hit, right? Because I've only got one target method. If I had a megamorphic send site where I had lots and lots of different target methods, not like basic new, like initialize, right? Where there's lots of initializes, right? Yeah. There, I'd expect branch, branch mispredictions, and I'd, I'd expect them to, to, to slow down. So I, I need to do you know, better measurements. But it does look like, like you know, for 1% of sends, I'll put up with that kind of overhead. I, I don't think I'll, you know, I think that there are better lower hanging fruit than going to all of this effort of doing the class analysis and stuff. But I could be wrong, and you could prove me wrong. So that's how, uh, that's how COG currently speeds up sends. And um, you should definitely read, uh, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, papers by uh, uh, Carol Driesen, who in the 90s uh, did really good analyses of this kind of thing and compared C++ uh, uh, implementations against small talk implementations and um, did work with uh, closed world uh, assumption compilation. Um, and one of the things that's interesting in doing uh, closed world uh, assumptions is if you think of what happens in a, in a, a, a C++ V table, what you do is um, provide uh, dispatch tables per class, which are indexed by selectors. So you number selectors, okay? And you index at each send site, a selector has a particular number that the compiler's assigned. And you fetch the you know the nth field of the class's v table. 
So you take a you take a hit, a read hit for fetching the class the, 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 the V table of the class, right? You take a hit for fetching the class of the instance. You take a, a read hit for fetching the V table out of the class. And then you take a read hit for fetching the nth slot. And then you take a, a branch misprediction, potentially take a branch misprediction hit for uh, doing an indirect branch to that target method. So that's, that's, that's four at every send, whereas in uh, these inline monomorphic things, I take one read hit for fetching the class in the header, right, in this, this, these two cases. And everything else is just a standard call across which the, the processor's uh, instruction prefetch logic can fetch. So the uh, consensus was in the mid-90s that these monomorphic um, inline caches outperform uh, C++ on uh, all but small working sets with processors that have support for uh, branch prediction. I can't, because I can't break, um, but, but basically uh, Carol, I think it's K-A-R-E-L, and then Driesen is D-R-E-E, -E. yeah, yeah. And Carol, Carol's, well, you know, type it any way you want at Google and it will correct it for you. And um, there's, there's really good papers there. And there's, uh, from, from Carol's, you can basically get to all of the work. So one of the things that you can do is, is um, you know, you know, what you're doing with, with V tables is that the compiler is, is, is uh, numbering selectors uh, and trying to come up with a number, numbering of selectors that minimizes the sizes of V tables. There's another thing you can do, which is you can have uh, selector tables where what you do is number classes. And so at each send site, you have a, a table, which is very much like uh, the, uh, the pick idea. And the table um, has as many uh, slots as there are possible classes that there could be at any site. And the, 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 the compiler needs to uh, assign optimal uh, class uh, indices to, to, to classes, and you index with the class. And it was work that found that, that you uh, came up with more compact tables. Um, which is both good for space and and time, so you know lots and lots of work has been done uh, in this in this area, uh, especially in the in the nineties. Uh, and for me, um, you know, this is something that I'm very familiar with. I did it this way because it works for me, and it may not be the best way, but it sure does help to know what you're doing <laughs> with with this kind of level of stuff. So I don't I don't claim that this is the the best way to do it. I just claim that this is a, a, a perfectly adequate way of doing it and that it, it has worked well for, for COG and we've got some, some decent speed. Thank you. No, 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 no. Thank you.